Welcome to the second tutorial on working with Microsoft Power BI. So in the first tutorial we looked at the overview of Power BI and we looked at how you could quickly sign up and also then how you could load an Excel data source into your Microsoft Power BI. So we currently got the Power BI sales data source already loaded in our Power BI here. So in this tutorial we're just going to look at how we can create some basic reports and visualizations with this data using the cloud-based solution. So you'll see on my left hand side over here I have my workspace. So my workspace allows me to create all my dashboards, reports and data sets. So, so currently I have one data set loaded which is my Power BI data, sales data. And as you can see from here I could explore this, rename it, refresh it or delete it. And then I have a dashboard. At the moment I have no reports. If I go to my dashboard I can open up my different dashboards over here. And this is basically my dashboard setting over here. You'll see over here within your dashboard that you've got your data set at the moment. Now because we haven't created any reports, we don't have anything on our dashboard. At the top here is the ability to ask questions of your dashboard. So this is our natural questions that we will look at a little bit later in the tutorials. And also the ability to share our dashboards. Okay, so we're just going to edit this. And you can see that we could change our title if we wanted to for our dashboard. So we're just going to discard that for now. And we're going to click on that. Okay, so now this takes me into the ability to actually create a report. So over here now what I have is my different visualizations that I can use within my cloud-based solution and the different fields that were in my Power BI. Now if I look at my Power BI data source over here, let's say for example the first report that I wanted to be able to look at was say for example I've got a list of my manufacturers over here and I wanted to know what is my total sales by manufacturer. So if I drag my manufacturer onto the canvas over here, you see that Microsoft will now go off and it loads my different manufacturers. So it creates now this first part of the report over here. If I now want to add my sales, then I can click on my sales over here. And you'll see now that Microsoft will automatically create a table which will show my sales and it will show my list of manufacturers over here. Now this is the part over here which is actually creating the report. So over here I have the settings for my different fields. So at the moment I can see I've got my manufacturer field and I've got my sales field. Down here we also have things like filters which we're going to look at a little bit later. And we have the ability to set a bit of formatting background over here. So do we want our totals on and off? Okay, if we want it off we can just turn off our totals. And we also have the ability to change our background color. So if you wanted a different background color, I wanted to make this a little bit gray, highlight the contrast a little bit and set a different opacity over here. So this is really the way that we format our different options. So you can see we've got our first report now which is our sales by manufacturer. Now say for example we wanted to now actually be able to filter this and we want to be able to filter it by different options. So let's say for example we have our product category over here. So I'm going to drag my product category over here. Now as you can see as I drag it onto my canvas uh, the first thing that it does is it just lists out the different options. Now over here, now during the tutorials we're going to get to know these different types of visualizations. But at the first visualization it creates is a table visualization. However in this case what I'm going to use is something called the slicer. Now a slicer is a really powerful way of being able to filter my data. So by choosing the slicer now it takes my product categories and it now gives me the option to be able to filter these. So let's say for example I want to use audio. So you can see now it's going through my manufacturer list, it's still showing me my sales. But now it's showing me only people, manufacturers who have sold audio. Or I could see cameras and camcorders. So this is a great filtering technique. I could use more than one option if I wanted to. Cell phones and computers, for example. So you can see that this slicer is a great way of being able to filter our data. As I said, we're going to look at filtering a little bit more detail as we go along. Okay, so we've still got our manufacturer by sales. We've got a product category now over here, which is showing our different... Uh, product categories and slicing these. So let's say for example we want to create a quick and easy chart. So let's say for example we want to see our product subcategories. Now we've got quite a lot of product subcategories over here. Again you'll see that as I drag it on here the first thing it does is create a table. So I've got a table over here. And let's say again we're going to see, let's say for instance we want to see our profit. Now another way we can add our profit is just to add it to our values field. You see the way that I drag it. And when I drop it onto my values field now, it'll add it to my different product subcategories over here. 
And you see we've got quite a long list of product subcategories. Okay, now this is, if I would now choose just a specific product category, it will now filter this list only for that product category. So if I wanted to see, say, cell phones, now it will show me my different product categories for cell phones. Okay, and you can see there's quite a lot of product subcategories here over here. So let's change this. Instead of using product subcategory, let's say we want to see different regions. Okay, so I'm going to now take out my product subcategory, my values, and I'm going to drag my region onto the values. So you can see it's very easy to, to be able to change the options over here. So now we've got our different regions and our different filters. Now it's showing me each of the different values over here. Okay, so let's say we want to add a new report over here. So we want to add a visualization. So over here we've got our different channels that we sell through. So I'm going to drag the channels again onto our dashboard over here. And you see Power BI will look through our data source and it comes up with the fact that we've got four different channels. We've got catalog, online, resell and store. So again we want to see, let's say for example we want to see this now by some of our profit. And you'll see now it will show all my different profits. So at the moment, if I go and I click on this, we'll see that there's different method of aggregation. So for example, if I wanted to see the sum of the profit or the average, the minimum or the max, I can count the profits. In this case, I want to sum it. So now I've got the sum of my profit for each of my different channels. So let's say we want to change the method of visualization over here. So in this case over here, let's use a column chart. So I'm going to use a clustered column. I'm going to click on that. And you'll see now that Power BI goes off and it's now created a profit by channel. And again now if I work this with my different slices, you'll see that it will now filter this according to the slicer. Now also what we get is we get interactive filtering. So if I want to see now what was my total sales by manufacturer but I want to see in store. Now you see by clicking on the store over here, it now filters this table over here. Or I can click on reseller or online. And you see we get interactive filtering that can be used. Now, the interactive filtering is really powerful. What we could do, for example, is have another chart and we'll show how the interactive filtering works between the two. So, for example, if I create a new chart, say product subcategory, and again, let's say over here I want to see my total profit. Again, I'm going to drag that on here and just tell it to sum it. Okay, so I've got my total sum of sales by product subcategories over here, which is quite useful. Just to make this easier to see, let's just say we want to see cell phones on, only. And you'll see now my product subcategories will only show for cell phones. And again now I want to change the method of visualization over here. So let's say we're going to use a bar chart over here. So I can just click on the bar chart. And now you'll see that we got profit by product subcategory. Now again, just remember over here we had our different formatting options. So you can format your different axis, you can change your colors, things like that. So we'll look at those as we go along in the tutorials. But what I want to just show you is this interactive filtering. So over here now, for example, if I was to click on, say, cell phones, and you can see my tooltip shows me the total for cell phones. Now what happens over here now is the fact that I actually now get an understanding by channel what is actually happening for cell phones. And there I can see my total sales by manufacturer. So this interactive filtering is really, really powerful. And as we go along the tutorials, we'll see that there's different options. Now, one of the things you might have noticed over here would be great if we actually got some labels to show us. So if I click on this and I just go to my labels, I can say I want my data labels on. And just turn on my data labels and now you actually get the amounts. So again, we can see this interactive filtering now working for different options. Okay, so in this tutorial, we've had We've seen how we can create a basic table, we've created a couple of charts, and we've used a interactive slicer to be able to create our first report. So what we're going to do is we're just going to save this quickly. We're going to enter a name for the report, and let's say we're going to call this um, sales report, and click on save. And now you'll see under my reports now that I have my first report. And again now if I want to just save that quickly again. And we go back to our Power BI sales data. You'll see that we've still got our dashboard over here. Now, however, if I go back to my sales report, and let's say, for example, I quite like this profit by channel or my profit by product subcategory. If I click on the pin, I can pin the visual. 
Now you'll see it says pin to dashboard. The visualization has been pinned to our dashboard. So let's just have a look over here. And now we'll see that we've actually got this visualization on our dashboard. So we can start to pin and create our own visual dashboards over here. And if I was to click on edit or the sorry the title over here, I'll just click on it. I go back into my report. So I'm able to now edit this report very easily. Okay, so this concludes this tutorial on understanding how we can create some tables and reports using Power BI.